raging Roland Railway is located on the island of Rugen in the very far northeast part of Germany, shown in red on the map. Berlin is at least three hours away by train and the industrial Rhine Valley some 500 miles distant. Originally, the railway comprised a northern part and a separate southern part, a situation that existed until the 30th of December 1967 when closures began. The green lines are the standard gauge lines. The first line closures in December 1967 are shown in yellow and closures continued until 1970. The line still in operation is 15 miles long. Maximum line speed is 19 miles an hour or 30 kph. Today the operational headquarters of the line is at Potbus. Other important points on the line are at Binz and the terminus at Goren. There is also a short line that operates less frequently in summer to lauterbach Mole. The railway has several small diesel locomotives for shunting purposes and also since 1998 a former Deutsche Bahn Class V51 seen here at Potbus. There is also a standard gauge loco for interchange traffic. Potbus has a standard gauge line linking to the main line at Stralsund, at Bergen off Rugen. This is our engine for the day, an 080 well tank of the K44 class. There are two of these engines on the line. The main workhorse of the line is the K57, a 2102 tank of which the railway has three examples. They were the final development of the Deutsche Reichsbahn narrow gauge locomotives. There is a third class of engine, the 280 of the K45 class. It has a remarkable overhang at the rear and looks as though it needs a rear truck. On our visit, this engine was in a small shed at Goren station. Here we see the standard gauge train providing a connection to Bergen off Rugen. The following day, the same train is seen at Bergen off Rugen. It's a Stadler Regio shuttle owned by the Rugenschi Baderbahn, which also operates the racing Roland trains. Back on the narrow gauge line, our first journey was along the short section to Lauterbach Mole. stopped at the intermediate station of Lauterbach. Considering the absence of houses in the area, the station was immense. It's now a listed building. We had a false start from Lauterbach. This is the end of the line, north the mixed gauge track. Back at Putbus, a service train was due to depart behind 2102 tank number 1781. Our group then visited the shed at Potbus and saw K57 number 1782 minus its wheels on stands. And the second 080 well tank minus its number plate and out of use. The locomotive for our train was back on shed, receiving its final preparations for our journey. The workshop was well equipped to maintain the locomotives and we saw the connecting rods for the K57 that we'd seen on supports outside the shed. A third K57, number 1784, was receiving attention in another part of the shed. For the summer service, two K57s are required as a spare engine. Our journey across Rugen Island was underway. At the remote request stop of Sealwitz, our locomotive ran around the train and waited for a service train to arrive.
A strong wind accompanied us throughout the visit. A service train eventually arrived, hauled not by the expected K-57, but by a K-45-280 tank and a 99482. After the departure of the service train, our train set back and provided two excellent run passes. The second open wagon behind the locomotive had an extra supply of coal. The strong wind was blowing the sound away from the camera. The heritage coaches in our train had been built early in the 20th century to a classic Saxony design. They originally had the Gorlitz type of counterweight brakes operated by cable and pulley. Vince is approximately midway between Putbus and Goran and is the largest seaside resort on the island of Rugen. The cab side of the loco displayed its Deutsche Reichsbahn heritage. At Gartit's request stop, our train stopped to allow a service train from Goran to arrive at the station. After the service train had departed, our train set back and made a run pass through Garftitz. After arrival at Goran, the engine took water and then added the box van seen to the left of the loco onto our train. It was then shunted and propelled back into the platform, ready for departure.
station mistress was responsible for working the pints. Finally, into the platform road. There was time for a false departure from Goran. On our return journey we made a stop at Barbe to allow a service train to pass. This was headed by K57 number 1781 that we'd seen earlier in the day. The modern coaches had steam heating whereas the vintage carriages only had a central stove. Then, one station further along at Selenost, we had a false arrival. Garftitz and another run past. Sealwitz we passed another of the hourly service trains headed by the 280 K45 number 4802. There was a staged arrival of the infamous East German car, the Trabant. This is one of the later improved versions. Our final view is of the proud pairing of the Trabant and the K44 locomotive, testament to East German engineering.